the second book of Adam and Eve, chapter 12, 13. Then the limbs of Seth were loosened, his hands and feet lost all power. His mouth became dumb and unable to speak, and he gave up the ghost and died the day after his 912th year, on the 27th day of the month Abib, Enoch being then 20 years old. Then they wound up carefully the body of Seth and embalmed him with sweet spices and laid him in the cave of treasures on the right side of our father Adam's body, and they mourned him for 40 days. They offered gifts for him as they had done for our father Adam. After the death of Seth, Edith rose at the head of his people, whom he fed in righteousness and judgment as his father had commanded him. But by the time Enos was 820 years old, Cain had a large progeny, for they met read frequently, being given to animal lusts until the land below the mountain was filled with them. And that's a Christian interpretation, obviously, because um, in Tanakh, the initial commandments are really get married, have sex, have children, not, you know, not this avoid getting married stuff that you find in the Bible. On the other, I mean, the Christian side of the Bible. Chapter 13. Among the children of Cain, there is much robbery, murder, and sin. I keep forgetting that um, that Cain is spelled with a Q and a Y. So, yeah. Um, 13 verses. In those days lived Lamech, the blind, who was of the sons of Cain. He had a son whose name was Atun, and they had, and they too had much cattle. But Lamech was in the habit of sending them to feed with a young shepherd who tended them, and who, when coming home in the evening, wept before his grandfather, and before his father Atun and his mother Hazina, and said to them, As for me, I cannot feed those cattle alone, lest one rob me of some of them, or kill me for the sake of them. For among the children of Cain there was much robbery and murder. Then Lamech pitied him, and he said, Truly, when alone, he might be overpowered by the men of this place. So Lamech arose and took a bow he had kept ever since he was a youth, ere he became blind. And he took large stones and smooth stones and a sling which he had, and went to the field with the young shepherd, and placed himself behind the cattle, while the young shepherd watched the cattle. Thus did Lamech many days. Meanwhile, Cain, ever since God, had cast him off, and had cursed him with trembling and terror, could neither settle nor rest in any one place, but wandered from place to place. In his wanderings he came to Lamech's wives, and asked them about him. They said to him, he is in the field with the cattle. Then Cain went to look for him, and as he came into the field, the young shepherd heard the noise he made, and the cattle herding together from before him. Then said he to Lamech, O my lord, is that a wild beast or a robber? And Lamech said to him, Make me understand which way he looks when he comes up. Then Lamech bent his bow, placed an arrow on it, and fitted a stone in the sling. And when Cain came out from the open country, the shepherd said to Lamech, Shoot, behold, he is coming. Then Lamech shot at Cain with his arrow and hit him in his side. And Lamech struck him with a stone from his sling that fell upon his face that knocked out both his eyes. Then Cain fell at once and died. Then Lamech and the young shepherd came up to him and found him lying on the ground. And the young shepherd said to him, Is Cain our grandfather whom thou hast killed? 
of my lord. Then was Lamech sorry for it, and from the bitterness of his regret, he clapped his hands together and struck with his flat palm the head of the youth, who fell as if dead. But Lamech thought it was a faint, so he took up a stone and smote him and smashed his head until he died. Chapter 14 Time like ever rolling like an ever rolling stream bears away another generation of men. Four verses. When Enos was nine hundred years old, all the children of Seth and of Canaan, and his firstborn with their wives and children, gathered around him, asking for a blessing from him. Then he prayed over them and blessed them, and adjured them by the blood of Hapal, the just, saying to them, Let not one of your children go down from this holy mountain, and let them make no friendship with the children of Paean, the murderer. Then Enos called his son Canaan, and said unto him, See, O my son, and set thy heart on thy people, and establish them in righteousness and in innocence, and stand ministering before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life. After this, Enos entered into the rest, entered into rest, aged nine hundred and eighty-five years. And Canaan wound him up and laid him in the cave of treasures on the left of his father Adam, and made offerings for him after the custom of his fathers. Um. This ten generations before the flood thing um, can't help but think is symbolic, particularly when we're looking at all this wrap them up like mummy stuff. Um, in ancient Egypt, there was this ten day festival that was sometimes celebrated. Um, you know, October 22nd was when it started. Um, sort of the uh, apotheosis of the king, you know. And these numbers could mean something other than the numbers, too, so. Chapter 15. The offspring of Adam continued to keep the cave of treasures as a family shrine. Four verses. After the death of Enos, Canaan stood at the head of his people in righteousness and innocence as his father had commanded him. He also continued to minister before the body of Adam inside the cave of treasures. Then when he had lived nine hundred and ten years, suffering and affliction came upon him. And when he was about to enter into rest, all the fathers with their wives and children came to him. And he blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Habel, the just, saying to them, Let not one among you go down from this holy mountain and make no fellowship with the children of Ayan the murderer. Mahal al-il, his firstborn son, received this commandment from his father, who blessed him and died. Then Mahal al-il embalmed him with sweet spices and laid him in the cave of treasures with his fathers. After they made offerings for him, after the custom of their fathers. Now, according to some accounts, it looks like some of the uh, some of this uh, some of these lineages were. Uh, I mean, some of these ent uh, individuals of the lineages were either devonized heroes or um, what people consider to be gods. Um, puts you know elsewhere so. Chapter 16. The good branch of the family is still afraid of the children of Cain. Twelve verses. Then Mahalal Il stood over his people and fed them in righteousness and innocence and watched them to see they held no intercourse with the children of Cain, and that means 
interaction too as well. Yeah. He also continued in the cave of treasures, praying and ministering before the body of our father Adam, asking God for mercy on himself and on his people until he was 870 years old when he fell sick. Then all his children gathered unto him to see him and to ask for his blessing on them all ere he left this world. Then Mahalalel arose and sat on his bed, his tears streaming down his face. And he called his eldest son, Jared. I'm going to presume that's pronounced yard because there's no j sound. Well, in Arabic there is, but... He then kissed his face and said to him, O Yard, my son, I adjure thee by him, who made heaven and earth to watch thy people and to feed them in righteousness and in innocence, and not to let one of them go down from this holy mountain to the children of Thayan, lest he perish with them. Here, O my son, hereafter shall come a great destruction upon this earth. On account of them, God will be angry with the world and will destroy it with waters. But I also know that thy children will not hearken to thee and that they will go down from this mountain and hold intercourse with the children of Thayan, that they shall perish with them. O my son, teach them and watch over them, that no guilt attach to thee on their account. Mahalalil said, Moreover to his son Jared, uh, uh, to his son Yard, when I die, embalm my body and lay it in the cave of treasures by the bodies of my fathers, then stand thou by my body and pray to God, and take care of them and fulfill the ministry before them, until thou enterest, and to rest thyself. Mahalalil then blessed all his children, and they lay down on his bed and entered into rest like his fathers. But when Yard saw that his father Mahalalil was dead, he wept and sorrowed, and embraced and kissed his hands and his feet, and so did all his children. And his children embalmed him carefully and laid him by the bodies of his fathers. Then they arose and mourned him forty days. A lot of this morning for 40 days stuff. Um, as I'm shooting this video, they're celebrating Arba'in, um, which isn't prophetically sanctioned. It's just something that people do uh, inform the tra tradition of. Um, chapter 17, Yard turns Martinet. He is lured away to the land of Payan, where he sees many voluptuous sights, Yard barely escape, escapes with a clean heart. So do they mean he... he uh, this is 48 verses. Do they mean he found himself a bunch of thick black women? Then Yard kept his father's commandment and arose like a lion over his people. He fed them in righteousness and innocence and commanded them to do nothing without his counsel, for he was afraid concerning them, lest they should go to the children of Payan. Wherefore did he give orders repeatedly, and continued to do so until the end of the 485th year of his life. At the end of these said years, there came unto him this sign, as Yard was standing like a lion before the bodies of his fathers, praying and warning his people. Satan envied him and wrought a beautiful apparition, because Yard would not let his children do aught without his counsel. Satan then appeared to him with thirty men of his hosts in the form of handsome men, Satan himself being the elder and tallest among them, with a fine beard. They stood at the mouth of the cave and called out to Yard from within it. He then came out to, him, uh, to them and found them looking like fine men full of light and of great beauty. He wondered at their beauty and at their looks and thought within himself, whether they might not be the children of Payan. He said also in his heart, as the children of Payan cannot come up to the height of this mountain, and none of them is so handsome as these appear to be, and among these men there is not one of my kindred, they must be strangers. Then Yard and they exchanged a greeting, and he said to the elder among them, O my father, explain to me the wonder that is in thee, and tell me who these are with thee, for they look to me like strange men. Then the elder began to weep, and the rest wept with him, and they said to Yard, I am Adam, whom God made first, and this is Habel my son, who was killed by his brother Cain, in whose heart Satan put to murder him. Then this is my son Seth, 
whom I asked of the Lord, who gave him to me to comfort me instead of Hubble. Then this one is my son Enos, the son of Seth, and that other one is Canaan, the son of Enos, and that other one is Mahalalil, the son of Canaan, thy father. But Yard remained wondering at their appearance and at the speech of the elder to him. Then the elder said to him, Marvel not, O my son, we live in the land north of the garden, which God created before the world. He would not let us live there, but placed us inside the garden below which ye are now dwelling. But after that I transgressed, and made he made me come out of it, and I was left to dwell in this cave. Great and sore troubles came upon me, and when my death drew near, I commanded my son Seth to tend his people well. And this my commandment is to be handled from one to another until the end of the generations to come. But, O Yard, my son, we live in beautiful regions while you live here in misery, as thy father Mahalalil informed me, telling me that a great flood will come and overwhelm the whole earth. Therefore, O my son, fearing your sakes, I rose and took my children with me and came hither for us to, ve uh, to visit thee and thy children. But I found thee standing in this cave, weeping, and thy children scattered about this mountain in the heat and misery. But, O oh my son, as we missed our way and came as far as this, we found other men below this mountain who inhabit a beautiful country, full of trees and of fruits, and of all manner of verdure. It is like a garden, so that when we found them, we thought they were you, until my, thy father, Mahalalil, told me they were no such thing. Now therefore, O my son, hearken to my counsel and go down to them, thou and thy children. Ye will rest from all this suffering in which ye are. But if thou wilt not go down to them, then arise, take thy children, and come with us to our garden. Ye shall live in our beautiful land, and ye shall rest from all this trouble which thou and thy children are now bearing. But Yard, when he heard this discourse from the elder, wondered and went hither and thither. But at that moment he found that not one of his children. Then he answered and said to the elder, Why have you hidden yourselves until this day? And the elder replied, If thy father had not told us, we should not have known it. Then Yard believed his words were true. And that elder said to Yard, Wherefore dost thou turn about so and so? And he said, I was seeking one of my children to tell them about my going with you and about their coming down to those about whom thou hast spoken to me. When the elder heard Yard's intention, he said to him, Let alone that purpose at present, and come with us. Thou shalt see our country, if the land in which we dwell pleases thee. We and thou shall turn hither and take thy family with us. But if our country does not please thee, Thou shalt come back to thine own place. And the elder urged Yard to go before one of his children came to counsel him otherwise. Yard then came out of the cave and went with them, and among them, and they comforted him until they came to the top of the mountain of the sons of Cain. Then said the elder to one of his companions, We have forgotten something by the mouth of the cave, and that the chosen garment we had brought to clothe yard with all. And he then said to one of them, Go back thou some one, and we will wait for thee here until thou come back. Then we will clothe yard, and he shall be like us, good, handsome, and fit to come with us into our country. Then that one went back, but when he was a short distance off, the elder called to him and said to him, Tarry thou until I come up and speak to thee. Then he stood still, and the elder went up to him and said to him, one thing we forgot at the cave is that it is as this, to put out the lamp that burns inside it, above the bodies that are therein, then come back to us quick. That one went, and the elder came back to his fellows and to Yard, and they came down from the mountain and Yard with them, and they stayed by a fountain of water near the houses of the children of Bayan, and waited for their companion until he brought the garment for Yard. He then who went back to the cave and put out the lamp and came to them and brought a phantom with him and showed it them. When Yard saw it, he wondered at the beauty and grace thereof and rejoiced in his heart, believing it was all true. But while they were staying there, three of them went into houses of the sons of Cain and said to them, Bring us today some food by the fountain of water for us and our companions to eat. 
But when the sons of Bayan saw them, they wondered at them and thought, These are beautiful to look at, and such as we never saw before. So they rose and came with them to the fountain of water to see their companions. They found them so very handsome that they cried aloud about their places for others to gather together and to come to look at these beautiful beings. And then they gathered around them, both men and women. Then the elders said to them, We are strangers in your land. Bring us some good food and drink. You and your women to refresh ourselves with you. When those men heard these words of the elder, every one of Cain's sons brought his wife, and another brought his daughter. And so many women came to them, every one addressing Yard, either for himself or for his wife, all alike. But when Yard saw what they did, his very soul wrenched itself from them. Neither would he taste of their food or of their drink. The elder saw him as he wrenched himself from them, and said to him, Be not sad, I am the great elder, as thou shalt see me do. Do thyself in like manner. Then he spread his hands, and took one of the women, and five of his companions, and did the same before Yard, that he should do as they did. But when Yard saw them working infamy, he wept, and said in his mind, My fathers never did the like. He then spread his hands and prayed with a fervent heart and with much weeping and entreated God to deliver him from their hands. No sooner did Yard begin to pray than the elder fled with his companions, for they could not abide in a place of prayer. Then Yard turned round but could not see them, but he found himself standing in the midst of the children of Cain. Now, maybe there's certain rules for a place of prayer, but... It's not who the people are. It's what's done there, their state of modesty or cleanliness or something, but not, you know. Turned around, but he could not see them. He found himself standing in the midst of the children of Cain. Then he wept and said, O God, destroy me not with this race concerning which my fathers have warned me. For now, O my Lord God, I was thinking that those who appeared unto me were my fathers, but I found them out to be devils, who allured me by this beautiful apparition until I believed them. But now I ask thee, O God, to deliver me from this race among whom I am now staying, as thou didst deliver me from those devils. Send thy angel to draw me out of the midst of them, for I have not power myself to escape from among them. But when Yard had ended his prayer, God sent his angel in the midst of them who took yard and set him upon the mountain and showed him the way, gave him counsel, and then departed from him. Chapter 18. 14 verses. The children of yard were in the habit of visiting him hour after hour to receive his blessing and to act his advice for everything they did. And when they had a work to do, they did it for him. But this time, when they went into the cave, they found not yard, but they found the lamp put out and the bodies of the fathers thrown about, and the voices came from them by the power of God that said, Satan in an apparition has deceived our son, wishing to destroy him as he destroyed our son Cain. They said also, Lord God of heaven and earth, Yahweh, Elohim, perhaps is what to represent. Oh. Deliver our son from the hands of Satan, who wrought a great and false apparition before him. They also spake of other matters by the power of God. Well, Lord God, heaven, earth, there's, that's a particular phrase, so I don't remember how that would go, but Lord God, um, I do. Uh, but when the children of Yard saw, heard these voices, they feared and stood weeping for their father, for they knew not what had befallen him. And they wept for him that day until the setting of the sun. Then came Yard with a woeful countenance, wretched in mind and body, and sorrowful at having separated from the bodies of his fathers. But as he was drawing near to the cave, his children saw him and hastened to the cave. 
and hung about his neck, crying and saying to him, O father, where hast thou been? And why hast thou left us as thou wast not wont to do? And again, O father, when thou didst disappear, the lamp over the bodies of our fathers went out. The bodies were thrown about, and the voices came from them. When Yard heard th this, he was sorry, and went into the cave, and there found the bodies thrown about, the lamp put out, and the fathers themselves praying for his deliverance from the hand of Satan. Then Yard fell upon the bodies and embraced them, and said, O my fathers, through your intercession, let God deliver me from the hand of Satan, and I beg you will ask God to keep me and to hide me from him until the day of my death. Then all the voices ceased, save the voice of our father Adam, who spoke to Yard by the power of God, just as one would speak to his fellow, saying, O Yard, my son, offer gifts to God for having delivered thee from the hand of Satan. And when thou bringest those offerings, so be it that thou offerest them on the altar on which I did offer. Then also beware of Satan, for he deluded me many a time with his apparitions, wishing to destroy me, but God delivered me out of his hand. Command thy people that they be on their guard against him, and never cease to offer gifts to God. Then the voice of Adam also became silent, and Yard and his children wondered at this. Then they laid the bodies as they were at first. Yard and his children stood praying the whole of the night until the break of day. Then Yard made an offering and offered it up on the altar, as Adam had commanded him. And as he went up to the altar, he prayed to God for mercy and for forgiveness of his sin concerning the lamp going out. And God appeared unto Yard on the altar and blessed him and his children and accepted their offerings and commanded Yard to take of the sacred fire from the altar and with it to light the lamp that shed light on the body of Adam. Chapter 19, the children of Yard are led astray, nine verses. Then God revealed to him again the promise he had made to Adam. He explained to him the 5,500 years and revealed to him concerning the mystery of his coming upon the earth. And God said to Yard, As to that fire which thou hast taken from the altar, to light the lamp with all, let it abide with you to give light to the bodies, and let it not come out of the cave until the body of Adam comes out of it. Now, uh, we might want to look at what words equal 5,500, or what verses, or whatever. But, O yard, take care of the fire, that it burn bright in the lamp. Neither go thou again out of the cave, until thou receivest an order through a vision, and not an apparition when, thou, when seen by thee. Then command again by thy people not to hold intercourse with the children of Cain, and not to learn their ways. For I am God who loves not hatred and works of iniquity. God gave also many other commandments to yard, and blessed him, and then withdrew his word from him. Then Yard drew near with his children and took some fire and came down to the cave and lighted the lamp before the body of Adam. And he gave his people commandments as God had told him to do. A sign happened to Yard at the end of his 450th year, as did also many other wonders we do not record, but record only this, one for shortness sake and in order not to lengthen our narrative. And Yard continued to teach his children Eighty years, but after that they began to transgress the commandments he had given them, and to do many things without his counsel. They began to go down from the holy mountain, one after another, and to mix with the children of Cain, and foul fellowships. Now the reason for which the children of Yard went down to the holy mountain is this, that we will now reveal unto you. Chapter 20 Ravishing music, strong drink, loosed among the sons of Cain, they donned colorful clothing, the children of Seth, Look on, with longing eyes, they revolt from wise counsel. They descend the mountain into the valley of iniquity. They cannot ascend the mountain again. After Cain had gone down to the land of dark soil, and his children had multiplied therein, there was one of them whose name was Genan, the son of Lamech, the blind who slew Cain. But as to this Ganun, Satan came unto him in his childhood and made him sundry trumpets and horns and string instruments, cymbals and psalteries and lutes and harps and flutes, and he played on them at all times and in every hour.
and you know um you know instead of the worshipful acts you know mere entertainment right and when he played on them satan came into them so that from among them were heard beautiful and sweet sounds that ravished the heart um this is 38 verses um we're not going to finish this bit but then he gathered companies upon companies to play on them and when they played it pleased well the children of Cain, who inflamed themselves with sin among themselves and burnt as with fire while satan inflamed their hearts one with another and increased lust among them and satan also taught ganun to bring strong drink out of corn grain and this ganun used to bring together companies upon companies in drink houses and brought into their hands all manner of fruits and flowers and they drank together thus did ganun multiply sin exceedingly he also acted with pride and taught the children of Cain to commit all manner of grossest wickedness which they knew not and put them into manifold doings which they knew not before drugs and mere entertainment can do that to people then satan when he saw that he yielded to ganun and hearkened to him and everything he told them rejoiced greatly increased ganun's understanding until he took iron and with it made weapons of war then when they were drunk hatred and murder increased among them one man used violence against another to teach him evil taking his children and defiling them before him and when men saw they were overcome and saw others that were not overpowered those who were beaten came to ganun took refuge with him and they made them his confederates then sin increased among them greatly until a man married his own sister or daughter or mother and others are the daughter of his father's sister so that there was no more distinction of relationship and they no longer knew what is iniquity but did wickedly and the earth was defiled with sin and they angered god the judge who had created them but ganun gathered together the companies upon companies that played on horns and on all other instruments we've already mentioned at the foot of the holy mountain and they did so in order that the children of seth who were on the holy mountain should hear it but when the children of seth heard the noise they wondered and came by companies and stood on the top of the mountain to look at those below and they did this a whole year when at the end of that year ganun saw that they were being won over to him little by little satan entered into him and taught him to make dyeing stuffs for garments and diverse patterns and made him understand how to dye crimson and purple and whatnot and the sons of Cain, who wrought all this and shone in beauty and gorgeous apparel gathered at the foot of the mountain in splendor with horns and gorgeous dresses and horse races committing all manner of abominations